All right. Here we go. So we'll call the meeting to order. First on the agenda <clears throat> is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be amended? Or if not, I'll just take a motion to approve as written. Should be moved. Sorry. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> and we don't have any appointments this evening, so we'll go right to public comment. So if there's anything that is currently not on the agenda uh, that you'd like to comment on, now would be the time. I have one person in person, so nothing, then we'll go online. If you have something, you can use the little hand button or you can oh, unmute yourself. Oh, he has yourself. his up. He ha um, the reporter has his hand up. Okay. Yeah. Oops. I, I'm an like anti-Zoom person, but I'm here tonight, so I don't have my hand up, so press the wrong button. I have low tech. Can you wait a second? Can you turn it up a little bit? Hang on, we're gonna adjust the volume. All right, we'll try it again. You need to get closer to computer. Okay. Did you have a question for the Herald? No, I'm still getting my tech in order. So sorry, I'm not a real Zoomer. Z great Zoomer, and I have low tech. I don't have okay. a question. I'm trying to get and configure my Zoom. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. And maybe Josh, I don't know. Was there anybody else? Uh, maybe Josh, did you? Yeah, sorry. Uh, oh. uh, me. Uh, if you can hear me, I just want wondering if we had a, could have an update on uh, Camp Brook. Looks like it's nearing completion, and uh, requesting if they can't pave it, if we can maybe get a you know a dirt road temporarily. So I saw your pictures. So thank you. We don't have a drone, so that is very helpful. I actually sent them to the federal highway guy. So thank you so much. Um, actually, you're right. It's coming along good. Um, no, they won't. We won't open it um, until it's paved. I asked them about that already because I did ask for one lane. Um, they're still, as far as I know, that they're still shooting. Or, or as far as I know, I spoke to someone, got a message the other day. They're still shooting for the 26th um, to be complete. And they're going to bring pavement in out of Massachusetts and install the guardrails. I asked for one lane and they said no, that they, because of the other work that they're going to be doing, they want to get in and get out. So, but anyway, but I did see your pictures. So thank you very much. I saw that they had backfilled it and, but your, the drone pictures are really helpful to see. So the I appreciate that. The 26th is Friday. <clears throat> the 26th is a Friday. Yep. <clears throat> All right, that was my way of keeping track is, you know, on a Saturday or something, I'd go up there. But, uh, you know, they, they seem like they purposely parked the equipment across, so <laughs> no one dares try crossing it. But, um, you know, yeah. it would be helpful to get any connection we can. So yeah. um, hopefully it's sooner than later. Yeah, hopefully. I haven't seen any, you know, hopefully there's no crazy weather. But right now, at least they've got the culvert in. They've got it backfilled. The wing walls are poured. Everything's looking great. So... Uh, they're still on target to haul um, pa pavement in out of Massachusetts, and um, they have a plan for that. Apparently, that Massachusetts, they'll extra heat it so that they can get it here to get the compaction they need. And uh, Lafayette's is all on board to install the guardrail. So, fingers crossed it's done before the 26th, but I'm just trying to be cautiously optimistic. Yeah, yeah and the storm we're supposed to get tonight. So, Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Just for curiosity, does that, I know we were sort of coming up on the limit of if we extended past a certain period of time, we weren't fully funded. Are we still in the clear with that? We are still in the clear. Yes, thank goodness. And it's hard to keep well, all their- We'll wait until they pay yeah, not, not yeah. Wait, <laughs> wait until they pay us. <laughs> yeah. Supposedly, yeah. we're still there. Yeah. Gotcha. It's all good until it's not good, right? Yeah, not so. the truth. Anything else online? Follow anything? Are you good? No, I'm good, thanks. Okay. So we'll turn it over. Uh, first on the agenda is to talk about the town meeting warning. So there's a draft copy for us. So the only, I was telling uh, Dave Eddy, the only odd thing was, Jen, when you write the articles, like Article 2 was straight on, but the ones that are, where someone passed a petition, for example, article number six. Um, you have to use the wording that they got the signatures on, but I did put in parenthesis in italics additional sum because I wanted people to understand that that was additional to what was already in the budget. So that's why that looks a little bit different than the others petitioned saying, or, or we put it in saying additional sum. For them, I 
made that change. Gene has his hand raised too. Um, <clears throat> so since Randolph, uh, no, since Royalton pulled out of the IREC, I didn't, I just did, I didn't put in another um, warning with that on because they had pulled out. So, so that's I, it. I think the only thing that I had saw, that, and I just was going to pose the question. So we, if we go through, so article one is, is basically the, the Australian ballot piece. Mm -hmm. And then our article two is the budget. Mm -hmm. right? So it follows in line. And then the next two are areas that um, could have or can be an appropriation that's inside the budget um, that were add-ons or that we had just determined to be add-ons. Right. Um, and then article five goes to, which is typically the social services. Mm -hmm. Article six would be an additional to a so social service that's there. Mm -hmm. So that all lines up. But then article eight, I'm sorry, article seven is in White River Valley mm -hmm. ambulance. But article eight, the 3000 for the playhouse. I wonder if that should be like after four, but before five. That way you keep like the, because oh, isn't, hasn't that been together? an appropriation? Isn't <clears throat> no, that last, how we... you voted on it last year because they won a thousand dollars last year. So they were on last year. Yeah. So I think I, I mean, I, I think honestly, I just used last year's warning and so I just got one if maybe just to, to move it around, organize it. So, cause sure. I see three and four as like the appropriations. I would see that as an appropriation. So just move it above the white yeah. river valley. And then like six, six is an additional to the social services. So that makes sense to keep that one right below that. So one. basically make number eight, B5. number seven or oh, five. Okay. Sure. That way they stay together and they're, Yep. So I can move. I, I guess. I mean, unless somebody else sees it differently, I just. I can I do was... that. We can make it so it would be library, food shelf, um, and then it's the social services. Then it would be South Royalton Area Senior Center, and then you could put since this is also an additional. Oh, I guess it's not. So do you want it after the senior center or before the senior? Well, center? I like the senior center because it is additional. Because, well, I, I think the good part about the the way you have it now, five is mm -hmm. the social services. Yeah. Six would be the additional 6,000 that somebody's okay. looking for. Right. Right. Um, so put, so put the playhouse before number five. Yeah. That's what okay. I was thinking. Like you, you would do three, four and five would yeah. be those. Okay. I can move it. Appropriations. I and it doesn't affect those. the signature page. So I can just move them around. It's not those are deal. appropriations. And then six and seven would be social yeah. services. And sure. then, then you no have problem. the White River Valley ambulance, and you know, and yep. you're, you're done through that. Does that make sense? Or? Mm -hmm. right. No problem. That was the only big thing I saw. Gene, did you have your hand raised? Yes. Uh, there is a misspelling in okay, Article where? 6 and Article 9. The phrase is not for profit, not I know. non for profit. Well, the, the trick is there, Gene, is that's how they petitioned for it. So we have to make our articles match. I agree with you, but I can't change it because all their signatures were on a petition that said non-for-profit. So I got to, I have to leave it because that's what was petitioned. And eight was the same. That eight was, was the same. Yeah. They both said non and it threw me off too. Um, but since the voters signed that petition, we have to put it in as is. So is it possible to change the position, the petition for the future? That would be up to them if they did it. I don't, they, oh, they so this was not a, no, they crafted their own petition. Yeah. yeah. The way they, just way they, they both, wrote it. They yeah. both, yeah. I, okay, I, I assume. See. So do you see what I mean, Gene? I, I, yes, I do. Uh, I agree with you. I don't but, think that's a substantive change. I think it's an editorial change. I don't know if that matters. If it does matter, that's fine. I just, I just noted that. Yeah, I think that maybe the I don't know who used who is chicken and egg who used which one, but they it was funny that they both used it because hmm. I saw I thought the same thing. So there's multiple ones. That there's they could two use. that say not. They draft their own petition, mm -hmm. so this was their wording, and that's oh, what they gosh. got signatures on. But it was funny that they both used mm -hmm. non for profit. I was like, I was surprised, so I put it in there that way. I think Paul had a question. Did you have a question, Paul? Uh, yeah, about the Lister uh, <laughs> yeah. Article 10. 
So yeah. can you hear me okay? Absolutely. So Article 1, you talk about the offices being voted on. I and know. It includes three listers. Yep. And then in Article 10, we're looking at eliminating, so, possibly eliminating the office of lister. Right. So does that mean that the, they'll, they'll, they will be on the ballot that people go to vote for during the day, either with names or, or write-ins or whatever, but then if this goes through in Article 10, though, that, that would be eliminated, those votes? Exactly. It's okay. one of those weird things that if we were still voting by from the floor, we would have voted for moderator, town clerk, and then we would have had to vote Article 10 before the listers came up. Right, but right. It's, yeah, it's kind of this weird, uh, I was talking to Rick Benson about it, and on the ballot, there'll be nobody running, so I'm sure there'll be some write-ins if anyone actually made the 30 and it goes through, they'd have to resign. But sure. yeah, it's just one of those weird things. Just like the fact is that per statute, this vote number 10 has to be done on a paper ballot. So mm -hmm. that's also a, a, another weird twist to it. But yeah, it's it, it's funky. There's no doubt, but that's the reasoning <laughs> behind it. Confusing. Okay, well, I, it is, that, right? uh, the, only, the only other one was the IREC vote, you know, that we went through at the last meeting uh, was a tie vote and, and all that stuff. Yep, um, and it's not on because Royalton is not was not going to support it. So Royalton right. was putting it on. So then it was a mute point because yeah. it was us and them, and they were the bigger one. Okay, so, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. So at that point, would it would it be best to move Article Ten to Article Two after the one and dissolve the listers? That's not going to matter or does, because does it, it matter it, at that point? It won't matter because you are you're voting Australian ballot all day till mm -hmm. seven o'clock. Right. So it seems more sensible to kind of stick with the yeah. money the okay. way you normally did it, and and that one is going like I said a paper ballot. So if Chris gets written in for a lister position, he doesn't have to take it. That's <clears> right. <throat> no, I don't have to resign. That's yeah. right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um, I just need you guys. If you sign this page, I can redo the. If you approve it. Okay. Here. So we're just, so right now the only change would be we're moving eight, article eight will be article five. And then yep. sequentially we'll be changed numbers from there on out. Yep. Any further amendments to the warning? Anybody yeah. see anything else? Uh, one quick thing, one quick note. So in theory though, other folks that are on the floor could call for paper ballots on any of these articles. Think, of course. Yep. yep. Just like always, same rules apply. This one just has to go that way. All you have to do is ask for it. Seven people Thank you. Agree. Yeah, I think Dave's right. So you have to ask for a paper ballot. Seven people have to agree. So any other <laughs> article could, but this one has to go. Right. Thank so, you. Which is also kind of weird. <laughs> so I move to approve the 2024 town meeting warning uh, as amended. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Signed. Okay. All right, so as we're doing that, we had a resignation from the Equity and Inclusion Committee, James Key, and he had a write-up in the packet. It, it, do you know um, it's moving out or? He didn't say. I yeah. sort of doubt he's leaving. Yeah, because yeah, he's just, really just established his farm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's got a lot of his yeah. yeah. I mean, I typically don't see him this time of year, obviously, because yeah. the... Um, yeah, so um, because the stuff, and he said he was going to be yeah. resigning. He's got too much on his plate. And I knew before he had um, the summer, which was sad. Like all of his hives died, and I guess that's oh, kind really? of an odd occurrence. And so he was working through that. Yeah, it was real bummer. Yeah, yeah nice. More hives yeah, now. super yeah. nice guy. Okay, well, I didn't know if maybe he moved. No, something. he didn't. Okay. Say, no. So just need a motion to accept his resignation. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And again, if we don't, then that means he's still in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So Gene. Sorry, I, James, we turned you down. <laughs> Gene, I don't need you to come by and sign the warning tomorrow. You're all set. I have to send it to um, the town reports going to the printers tomorrow morning. So, um, but thank you. And let's see. 
Um, designation of Stitzel, Page, and Fletcher as attorneys for tax sale collection. So this is something you have to sign every time we do it and we're moving forward. Hopefully our plan is at this point to have a tax sale in March. That's when we did the last one was in March. So you already know what properties we have. Yep. Yeah, well, we have a list of properties that have already gone to the lawyer and they would be going to tax sale for delinquent property tax and or delinquent water sewer. So they've already gone and they've already received their first letter from the attorney. So there's still time for them to make a payment, make a plan and, mm -hmm. and, um, not go and sale. not go to yeah. tax sale. Yeah. So okay. based on last year's, let's say first round of letters versus who went to tax sale, was there, I mean, what percentage of those people ended up being in tax sale? 20% or 10%? Maybe, or? I would say, yeah, probably 20. I mean, there's some that sometimes the, the ones that have ignored you for a long time, but then they get a letter from an attorney, those people generally mm -hmm. you're like, oh, hey, you meant business, right? <laughs> Come by and make a payment plan or catch up. So- um, Are we looking at a large number of no, individuals or? No, okay. no, but some of them are the same. You know, we have a couple that are repeats that we've done before. And I talked to the lawyer Frequent about flyers. that. Huh? Frequent flyers. Yeah, yeah, we have one out on, um, Oh, and East Bethel, and, and they've been a regular occurrence. And I asked the attorney, is it worth it to go up to tax sale? He's like, I've already searched that property and there's probably not much action. So he's like, for the small amount, mm -hmm. you should just put it out because someone might buy it. Okay. This, these days, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So at this point, it would just be making a motion to authorize myself to sign on behalf. So yeah. move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I've got the minutes, Julie, so don't worry about it. You can, you can just enjoy. <laughs> and Sorry, I have the minutes ready. I just need to fill in the blanks. Okay. <laughs> well, you can if you want. <laughs> Do whatever you I'll want. Send it along to you and you can use it. Okay. And then we just have the annual certificate of highway mileage um, ending. That's their year ending. They say 210, 210 2024. 2024. Yeah. So as you can see, they already, I had sent them the information about uh, right road. So, and all the backup. So they put it under, and you can see under two and three where they did that. So we just subtract the mileage, change the total, mm -hmm. and then you all sign at the bottom. Town clerk signs it, and then it gets filed on the land records and sent on to um, VTrans. Okay. <clears throat> right. So just need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So you can start. There's enough signature spaces for you guys here and here. So a lot of sign in your lives away oh, tonight. Know. Last chance. <clears throat> and we are looking at um, selling the 2000 Ford F 550 rescue. Yeah, truck. <laughs> what you guys had talked about when you knew when we bought the other one that you were going to be selling it. This just gives Dave, I don't know when the sale is going to go through. So it just gives him the authority to sign the title and all the paperwork to go with it because we're going to sell it through, I think, Fire Tech out of Randolph. They actually have a pretty, they've sold before and they have a wide swath of people, you know, they're nationwide. It, was it still. I can't remember what the dollar figure was on it when we I think approved we were, the new purchase. We but. were hoping, we're hoping, hoping for like 30000 I think, is the price. And, and hopefully we're hoping for higher than that, but I think that's what we were kind of looking at. So if it comes in a little bit less than that, I think we're going to have taken some money out of Dave's, his current year budget to offset the difference. But And when would the new one get? It's already in service. Oh, it's already in service. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Was there an opportunity to put a picture of it in the town warning? Nope. No. Because it's not lettered. Oh. 
undercover. Right, exactly. At least last I knew it wasn't lettered. It's an undercover rescue. That's pull into the rescue. Undercover. Last I knew it wasn't lettered. I could be corrected. <laughs> I don't know. But last I heard it was not lettered. So oh, nice. that's where we were at. But so There's, next Well, year. maybe they can park it out there at town, you know, yeah. usually at town meeting when we get something new, we park it. You know. Oh, do they? Oh. Yeah, we've done that in the past. We park the Tell Dave to drive it over. Or whatever out there so people can see it. Mm-hmm. I do have so a we, people faint when they see the budget <laughs> increase. Yeah, because because of the budget. Budget. That's right. <laughs> we do have a very nice picture in the town report of they had decorated the fire truck with like lights and stuff. So there is a really on the first on the dedication page, there's a really nice picture of the fire truck that's all light up with like Christmas lights and stuff. It's pretty fun. Okay. Just for curiosity, does that when they sell that, does that go back into the fire department's budget or it does, goes into the, the fire the, capital okay. apparatus okay. fund? Yeah. Capital fund. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Just we don't fun. give them that I money. like knowing how it all yeah. moves around. We do not give them that money. Uh uh-uh. it goes back in. I th- yeah. But then they could use that to reinvest. Yeah, it gets deposited into- back into the fire department's capital equipment funds. So. Great. That's a good. Mm-hmm. And the um, so we just need a motion to approve that. Mm-hmm. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Over that, Jane. Yep. Gotcha. All right. And then uh, discussion of the sale of the cruiser. So now that. Now that things are moving forward on <clears throat> um, having yeah. Windsor sheriffs, yeah, he approached. Be on call, you know, there's the opportunity to sell the cruiser if we want to, or yeah, um, he actually, the sheriff actually called me the other day. That's why it's in here and asked what we were doing with the cruiser, and he said that <clears throat> he didn't. He thought it would make a good detail car for like somebody, you know, sitting on the interstate at a you know, when they're overseeing work or doing work or whatever. So he felt it would be a good detail car. I told him that the select board had not yet decided what was going to happen with the vehicle. Um, and that I anticipated at least we'd hang on to it. I mean, until the end of June, uh, just because that's your first contract with them, but you could certainly, there was talk about holding on to it. Then there was talk about selling it and he is interested in purchasing it. Is there <clears throat> like, do we have a, do we know what the blue book on that I haven't would looked. be? I and didn't even then, look. I guess then cross reference <clears throat> it based upon what he's looking. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. make it up. It's, I'm sure he only wants to pay about a thousand dollars. Is he going to pay ten thousand dollars for it? Or <laughs> I'm sure he wants to pay very little for it. Um, as you know, but I know we bought it in Massachusetts. I can't remember exactly what we paid for it at the time or right now, but um, wasn't a ton. But um. I didn't know if you wanted to hold on to it until the end of June or, or you definitely got to hold on to it till after town meeting to see what happens. Mm-hmm. But right. And we had talked mm-hmm. about it in terms of like, do we hang on to it to make sure that we like this new setup and that it's mm-hmm. functional versus maybe in a year we realize, Oh, actually let's revert back to an in, in-house right. service versus a <laughs> contracted service. Um, right. It's just one of those things if you have the car sit, you know, what happens. Right. And, and it's also like if somebody's making us an offer, we can get that money now versus letting it sit and it's not doing anything for us, right. you know. And I think Oscar will use it part time because he knows if it goes through, he'll be done in June and he may use it until then. That was obviously his deal that he made with the prior town manager. So maybe he I'm, I'm he also has his own vehicle, so he'd be willing to give it up now, I'm sure. But um so I don't know what you want to do. I I did not do any research into it, what the blue book is, and I'm all happy to do that and can come back to you at another meeting, or you can we could wait and put it on the agenda for after town meeting. Well, I, I would definitely think that we probably should wait till town meeting day to make mm-hmm. sure that that is what everybody voted in, and then okay. if we get a handle of what it's worth and yeah. what somebody's willing to. I mean, at the end of the day. It's only worth what someone's, someone's willing to pay. give. It, right? Exactly. But if the blue book is ten thousand dollars and only going to give us two for it, then mm. is that even worth it? You know, right, right. Where if exactly. they're going to give you market value for it, then maybe it's something that we unload. Do we do? Uh, what do we have in the cruiser fund now? Because we'll have to. Will we have to dissolve that? No. Now. No, you can move it to another capital fund. I want to say you only have like five or 10 grand in there. And then how would we do that? Can we <laughs> just make a motion at a board meeting to yes. to dissolve that and move it to capital fund? Or would you, we have to do that? You don't, I don't believe you have to do it at town meeting. I, I believe that you can make, because you have, the select board has the authority to spend the money there out of the, out of the front. So you could certainly move it to, 
highway equipment or whatever you wanted to do with it. You could move it out of there. Yeah. Well, probably not. I mean, or, 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 you know, like kind of like <laughs> what me. Lindsay, uh, would it be worth, I'll, I'll make it up. So, so if we have $5,000 in there now and let's say they give us $10,000 for the cruiser, mm -hmm. right? So we have 15. Would it be best for us for at least a year to just leave $15,000 in the cruiser fund? Just That's in case, not gonna hurt anybody. just in case people yeah. say, wait a minute, we don't like mm -hmm. this. We want to hire our own person back. And yeah, absolutely. at least then we have money. Right. Cause it's not, use. it's not hurting anybody to leave it right. No, where right. It is. absolutely not. And see how it all plays out and then move it. If you're like, right. yeah, this is great. Let's do mm -hmm. it. Or oh, yeah, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it in that there. That might be the best. It might be. And that, no, okay. it doesn't. It doesn't. 5% interest at max. Yeah, exactly. bank yeah. and... I'll have to have Pam look at that. We'll put it in the CD for a while. Yep. Have Pam look at it. Okay. So, so sometime between now and town meeting day, we'll just get a book back yeah, on it. Yeah, and then we I just can talk enough. about it again after. To look at yeah. that and see what it is. You can always pick his brain and ask him what he's willing oh, to do. Oh, it wasn't it. my, you know, he didn't throw a number at it. He just was <clears> obviously, you know, yeah. he, he wants to spend as little as possible. Like he was doing me but, a favor. <laughs> but I know just, I know there's a lot of individuals out there that obviously you'd have to take some pieces out of it, but I know mm -hmm. there's a lot of individuals out there that would mm -hmm. buy it for a personal vehicle. Oh, absolutely. Like I mean, it's a Dodge that, like, Charger. That, it's like not having, like it's, you yeah. know. Yeah, those are kind of a classic. Yeah, mm -hmm. or they like to have used police vehicles, right? Yep. So I'm sure you could get top dollar for it. Yeah. So I will look at what the blue book value is. I had to ask Oscar what the mileage is on it and then we'll take a peek. Okay. Well, we did a bunch of work on it this summer. I know he did a bunch so of them, yeah. We got that as well. All right, so we'll wait on that. Anything on town manager's report? So the postcards, uh, people have already, should have already received the postcards um, yeah. saying that, you know, that the town, that they could pick up town report that'll be online. It's going to the printer's tomorrow that's the plan we've edited it all it's ready to go i have to take it to spalding press scan it and then take it to spalding press tomorrow so town reports will not be mailed to your home um you will be able to pick them up and they're also once it's done there'll be a pdf for you to read on the website and then once we do that we'll put a note on front porch forum and facebook that it's that it's out Come in so person, people pick it up or that people can read it online mm -hmm. um, I, I appreciate that you've been doing and i feel like the town in general, you know, has been doing more sort of use of front porch forum. And I think it's been really, yeah. really smart and to the town's advantage. Like I like yeah. seeing that sort I of like uptick in our porch. use of it. I think it, it really kind of gets the word out and reminds people that maybe had intended to come to a meeting. Oh yeah, that's happening. Like it's, it's yeah, been really nice to see it. Yeah. I like front porch forum. I personally, I personally do not yeah, like it. Like a four or five day yeah. notice. Like, you know, if you got to get groceries and you live on a back road, do it now. Don't yeah. Yeah. Sure all the, all the, bases, all the, but it really, yeah. 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 It's been, exactly. Yeah. I it's been smart. Front porch forum I find is very useful and, and, and I like it. I, I avoid. I'm basically. still finding there are people out there that are still confused about the Australian ballot thing. So Okay. keep having people approach me be like you know oh right so so is there a town meeting because isn't it all being done you well, know then, voted you i know, know town meeting committee has so. been doing and has some publicity planned and i don't know how much i don't know the details of it i just I know that they've been i just put something in town report for them things but, but yes yeah, so people need to understand that you will be voting australian ballot from 8 a.m until 7 p.m on town meeting day for elected officials. You'll be electing new select board members, public uh, trustees of public funds, uh, town moderator, town clerk, town treasurer, um, but town meeting itself will start as always at 10 a.m. You will be voting all the other articles from the floor, uh, budgets, uh, et cetera. Um, and you can vote during town meeting to, for Australian ballot. It'll be held in the same building, just not in the same location. So, so while we're talking about this, I think that we have been talking as a select board and, and as individuals and about taxes. And last meeting, uh, Paul had asked me, you know, how many cents on a tax rate? And I teased Paul and said, I do percentages. Chris is the penny on the tax rate guy. So uh, the amount that we had was wrong. I was using 25,000, but I believe in hindsight, it should have been 21,400. So I did change the corrections in town report to reflect that, how many pennies on a tax rate. 
but still we're looking at about three cents on the tax rate for the base budget that the select board put forward. The additional articles of the playhouse, um, the library, additional money for the library, uh, additional money for food the shelf. food shelf, and the additional money for the senior center, uh, Royalton Senior Center, will be an additional three cents on the tax rate. So that... No, that's, that's already included. That. We include that in the budget. Okay, but yeah. it's just on the separate line. It always yeah. has yeah. been. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So, so when we talk about that, pennies or percentages on the tax rate, what I tried to make clear in our budget summary this year that'll be in town report is that is the municipal tax. So when everybody gets their tax bill, uh, sometimes people forget that we bill you for school tax, even though we have personally no control over school tax. So we're collecting yeah, we municipal collect taxes as well as school tax. That's a state law that the municipalities collect school tax. So <clears throat> one of the things that you should realize is the school tax currently may be going up 12 cents. So that's three cents for us, three cents if the additional articles pass, and then 12 cents for the school. So that's a lot of cents on the tax rate. So I was hoping that Chris Jarvis, since he's the vice chair of the school board, um, could explain that a little bit because municipal tax is easy to explain. You know, we raise a percentage off the grand list. Ta-da, <laughs> that's it. Uh, school tax involves yields and common level of appraisals and, and things like that. So um, when so it's something for you to keep in mind. And I also did publish the date um, in town report, which is something we don't normally do of the school meeting. So because your school budget is not voted Australian ballot, your school budget is voted from the floor and you take turns because you're a unified district. This year, you'll be voting in Bethel. Yep. Last year, you voted in South Royalton. And it was a very small turnout. I've heard as mm -hmm. just as few as 60 people passed a yeah. $12 million, is it 12 million? $12 million budget. So this year it will be in Bethel and we urge people to attend. Um, so I'm going to let Chris explain for the record because you know, it's confusing to me. <laughs> do you know the date of the school meeting? In I do, but I can't tell you right now because I don't have it in front of me. Um, I can look it up. It's, uh -huh, you can look it up while Chris is looking. Yeah. Chris Pam told me today and I remembered long enough to type it into town. My job work at the town report, but so can you explain school tax, the yield, common level yeah, so, appraisal? <laughs> well, just to kind of I mean, Dave knows back up a little that, bit. But. So the governor went on record about maybe about two months ago, and you know he came out front and said, you know, be prepared, Vermonters, your taxes could go up as much as fifteen to twenty percent, and that was, and of course, a lot of people you know, mocked him and said he wasn't right. And there was a lot of misinformation, but mm -hmm. it appears now that he was very correct. So, um, so on the town, I mean, like Teresa was saying on the town budget, the town budget, the local municipality has a lot more control over their budget than the schools do. So our budget fluctuates based upon if we want to change any services or like probably so this year for our town budget, some of our town budget increases are change in services. We've decided that we wanted to have the sheriff's department um, do our, our policing for us, which has cost some more money. And then a majority of the other pieces are inflation related, you know, benefits going up like they always do in, in different, you know, materials mm -hmm. that cost more money and things like that. <clears throat> so, so that's the, the town. And then we've had this year, um, so out of the nine years I've been on the board, this is the first year that we've had actually a lot of other identities reach out for more money. Yeah. You know, so we had, you know, <coughs> not me. that we didn't, you know, we had the library last year, but, um, uh, so you had the library again this year, the food shelf, which was the first time the senior center, which had added the playhouse was a thousand that now has gone to 3000. So there's a lot. And I've had two other people reach out to me in the last week, ask about, other ident you know, identities for more money that isn't going to make it into the budget because the budget was already moving forward. Um, that may get up at town meeting day and ask to get a, something increase. So there's 
and the economic climate that we're in right now, you know, there's a lot more people in need. And I think there's a lot more people reaching out for more funds. Yep. So that's municipality. The school budget is very complex. So <clears throat> one, one of the reasons why I got on the school board was I just really wanted to understand the inner workings of the school. Right. Um, and the budgetary process is, is very complex to the point that you could put a budget out there now to vote on that may not be the budget that you get. So, and I'll take you through that. And so the school this year is going to have two informational meetings. I don't have the dates in front of me, but we'll get them out there on the town as mm -hmm. well. And the superintendent himself is having three um, sessions, their morning sessions or like 8 a.m. sessions where he can just go over like, um, there was a new act 127 that was the legislation had put in for um, it's basically the, the way in which we um, share revenue with children this year. Um, so it's a different funding mechanism. So he's doing some things where locals can come in and just learn about that. <clears throat> so on the school level, there's three, three pieces that typically um, form the budget. So you have your common level of appraisal. So, um, so your real estate, um, appraisals in your area. So actual sales. So most of the time, you know, in a perfect world, it's a hundred percent. Now, as things go up or down, that percentage can, can increase, um, or it can decrease. And once it gets to a certain point, like 85%, then it triggers an automatic reappraisal. Now we knew in Bethel that we were getting close to that 85% a couple of years ago. So we already started the process of putting together the new appraisals. Right. Now that with everything changing in the last two years with home prices, um, and then actually the state of Vermont came out and said, going forward, you're gonna have to reappraise your, you know, every six years, mm -hmm. seven years now. Yep. Um, that the common level appraisal goes on the last three years of sales. So if you look at it right now, we had three years ago, there was like a stable environment. Two years ago, there was not a stable environment. Everybody started buying houses, you know, a half a million dollar house was going for a million dollars. And last year you didn't see as much movement, but it was still kind of an erratic year. <clears throat> so, so that three-year average there's two thirds of the three-year average right now that is weighted down on, on drastic number changes. And, and, and what's even going to be harder is next year, you're going to lose the last of your stable year. So you're going to have like three unstable years. So it's going to go down even more until it gets fixed. So the common level appraisal is one piece. And ours Bethel dropped like nine, yeah, so, nine points. Yeah. And I can 9%. go through that in a minute. So Bethel's went from 88% last year down to 79% this year, which is mm -hmm. a drastic, drastic change. Yes. Um, Royalton's went from mm -hmm. 85% down to 79%. So theirs went down as well, but not as much. Now Royalton last mm -hmm. year, we passed a school budget last year that was less than a penny increase. It was like a half a penny in yeah. Bethel. Royalton last year, if I remember right, I think theirs was up like four cents because their common level of appraisal went down farther last year. Mm -hmm. um, and then normally, it took us years to get used to this, but normally the other portion is what they call equalized pupil. And the equalized pupil is the number that the state of Vermont um, gives you through the um, education fund per child that is in your school 67 or 68 percent of the time um so it's like you know eighteen thousand dollars for every child you have in your school to give you eighteen thousand dollars now so what what how everything all changed is um one the state changed their funding formula um so they pass act 127 which is kind of you'd have to go online and read it but Basically in the past, there's been um, uh, budgets, school budgets couldn't change by a certain percentage. And if it did, it could get penalized. Um, and the Act 127 changed the funding formula, but at the same time, it, um, it changed the penalty around for the, for the schools. Mm -hmm. So kind of almost reverted back to what, what we did five, six years ago with that 46. Was it? Did it remove the penalty well, or just changed it? It's changed it. So, so the challenge we have right now is the, the uh, it was, it was a win for 
Bethel and Royalton school district. So the way the, the children that we have in our schools, actually we, we made out really well, uh, but there's other schools that didn't make out really well. Um, so the school, we are putting the school budget together and uh, our school budget is going up about $400,000. Now that's a lot of money, uh, but you also have to think, you know, you're getting into a $14 million budget and our school is growing, which is good. Those are good things. So most schools are shrinking right now. Our school finally has a good direction and we're having more children come into our school system right now. So most of our numbers is we have children inside our district that are actually staying in our district to go to school. Mm -hmm. So like, let's say somebody that's in Chelsea, you know, Chelsea middle school then goes to high school in Thetford, right? So you lose that child, but now more of those children are staying in our school. So we're collecting more of that money. We're not, we're not sending them out. We've also had um, children coming in through the Winooski Valley system. So like Randolph had a, a mass exodus of children that wanted out of their school. And we had nine that came from Randolph. Now the trick thing with that one is you don't get any extra money. It's kind of a weird thing, but any kid that comes through the Winooski Valley system, you don't get any money for it. Uh, but, but it's basically like advertising, like, you know, people want to come to our school, um, type deal. Um, so the first budget that we made, we were going to have a seven cent savings to, um, to Royalton and Bethel. And we had devised that we were going to, um, take the seven cents and maybe give a two cent savings and put the other five cents worth of money away like in a capital fund to keep building. Um, and in our second meeting, the bond yield in the state um, was cut in half. So normally the bond yields like 18%. And the bond yield is kind of, uh, if you take like the educational general fund of this is how much money they raise. So either by state local taxes or federal money. And then, and then the percentage is given out to the, um, to all the towns to use. And the last couple of years, the bond yield has been very high because there's been a lot of COVID money that was associated that they could use where instead of, instead of our legislation actively trying to fix some of our budgets over the last couple of years, all they did was just took that money and just, you know, plug the holes. And now they haven't fixed any of those issues that are still out of control. And now the federal money has dried up. So now the bond yield comes down. So, um, so the bond yield was cut in half. So our seven cent, it, our seven cent savings that was going to be to Bethel turned into eight cent increase just by the just by um, just the bond that, yield <clears throat> by that and our common level of appraisal in Bethel mm -hmm. went down from eighty eight percent to seventy nine percent. So, so there was a fifteen cent swing just by those two things going Lord. down, <clears throat> uh, which is huge, huge swings. Like normally like a swing is like a penny or two or something like that. Um, and then our last revision, we found out again that the yield was dropping further. Um, and now it has gone from eight cent um, increase to a 12 cent increase. And we, well, we've been told that it's likely it's gonna go even further, but we won't know that until after we vote on it. Was because they so, think the bond yield is going to drop again. Well, the thing is, is town meeting day is done prior to the state officially setting their yield. So they have until oh. the end of the fiscal year to set their yield. So they have until June 30th to set so, their yield. So we okay. could very well vote in a 12 cent increase and it could be make it up 15 cents or something by the time they figure it out. Because they have found now that there is an error in the legislation that they put through with Act 127. So, <laughs> so they have figured that out now. So now they're trying to figure out how to lessen, lessen Hello? because what's going to happen is these communities that would have gotten penalties that aren't now, somebody's got to pay for the penalty. And it, what it does, it goes back into the general fund, which then gets distributed back out to us. Right. So everything goes down further. So that's the challenge right now. Um, um, so now just inside our district. So when we say our district, our neighboring um, you know, like the stock bridges and the, um, 
Royal, uh, oh. uh, Tunbridge and Stratford Rochester. and all those mm -hmm. is some of those towns already are looking at 20 plus cent increases. And, and we've even gotten word that in Vermont, there's, there's one as big as 41 cent increase this year. So it's, you know, I, I think the governor right now is going to say, I told you so, because I'm sure he had all this info ahead of time, which was he knew what the tax department was looking at. <clears throat> I'm sure they said the average common level of appraisals here, and it's going to take this much hit. So that's going to be X amount of cents. And then obviously he had some insight into what the bond, what was the yield doing. was going to mm -hmm. do. Um, so it, it's a tough year. And, and the challenge we had at the school board is, <clears throat> you know, we put together a very responsible budget and, and probably we could find $200,000 maybe to cut out of it. But we, but we have to also, it's kind of one of those, like, if you build it, they will come. And, and we're starting to see a large amount of children come into the school. So now we have to continue to develop the services to keep those children coming. Um, so, I mean, we could have maybe shaved two cents off it, but, you know, at the end of the day, what is the two cent on it? Um, now, some things that on the school budget, which was really cool, is on average in the past, um, we budget for around 10 or 15 tuition students to come in um, that we get, you know, we set a tuition rate. So right now our tuition rate's like $20,000 a kid. Right now we have about 60 kids on tuition right now. So, I mean, we're, it, so you are it's a, destination a good momentum. School. Yeah, it's, and then we're also going to be looking at a bond, a school bond um, in November, um, so we're, we're looking at uh, building an arts and performance center, um, as well as securing some of the entrances at both campuses and some additional ventilation work, um, which is gonna be five and a half million dollar bond of which, um, well, five and a half million dollar bond, which of which probably will be about two and a half million dollars worth of money that the taxpayers will have to come up with, which over 20 years is like, two cents or something like that. So again, they're all things that we're trying to put in there. Right. So, wait, I have a question. So, so you said, that I'm just for the minute. So looking for a bond vote in November for an art center and securing school entrances, is that just Royalton or Bethel too? So the, the, the performance entrances. art center will be at the high school. Mm -hmm. um, and then with the performing art center, they're going to take care of the uh, back, we call it the back entrance of the school. So that will be redone. And then over here in Bethel, they're gonna redo the, what we call the middle school entrance because it's only a single, yep. it should be double occupancy. Um, and they're right now they're single, mm -hmm. not to mention you can see holes through the doors, but, mm -hmm. uh, and then the, um, they'll do some other work in the elementary piece of it. Um, and then they're gonna do some ventilation work in the library and, and Royal 10, and then there's some, when you do things, there's storm water stuff that you have to right. do and things like that. So it's so, five and a half million. Yeah. Well, what was really cool is so not to go through a whole education thing on this, but so right around the time, I think that I came into the area, they had Royalton had a bond that they were trying to do a performing arts center and the gymnasium at the same time. I don't know if anybody remembers that or, and it was a big ticket item uh, obviously. And um, it got shot down. And then they went back out to bond with just the gymnasium and that went through. Um, so there were some donors back then that didn't dare put their money up, but said like, we want the performing arts center and things like that. So, so uh, about well, just as I got on the board two years ago, they had started to talk about some people had approached us. I'm on the facility committee and about the performing arts center. And I said, mm -hmm. well, you know, what would something like that be? So we got some drawings and said, well, okay, it's going to be like, three, three and a half million dollars for this performing arts center. And I said, well, you know, in order to get it off the ground, I think that we have to show some money, some good faith money in front of it. Right. So, so we determined that if we could fundraise a third of it, you know, if we can get a million dollars with the donations, then at least it kind of looks good when you're, when you're looking to bond. So they, the, the first night they got a, check in hand donation of a half million dollars from one identity. And they have right now, they have three other identities that have not disclosed their donations, but one is an identity that basically 
waits to see what your total dollar figure is. And then they give you a percentage of that. Um, so we, at our last meeting, we gave the final percentage. So that donor is now going to hopefully cut us a check for a percentage of that. I don't know, but it sounds like it's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Um, and then one of the biggest donors, um, that wanted to do it last time is also going to donate. And then apparently there's some, um, there's some alumnus that graduated from Royal 10 years ago that are wall street brokers or something that we're talking about doing. So there's a potential of, you know, a million plus worth of donations just for that. Um, but, um, you know, again, it's kind of one of those things where now that you have a lot of kids coming into the school, now you got to continue to build those services. Um, so like our, I was talking that the budget's up $200,000, $125,000 of that is because we finally are going to put an SAP counselor there, which is, you know, needed. Yeah. Well, needed in this when it comes climate. to mental health. So yes, absolutely. Like, and that's know, a full time. Yeah. And, I mean, any full time position, once you figure in Benny's yeah. and everything, it's expensive. So yeah. I'm and just, that person will be not just the high school that go between both schools. Yeah. Cause right now we have some that go between. So this will allow like one person on one campus, one on another and things nice. like that. So that's a smart move. Um, so I, the school, I, I, I hope that people understand that the budget is very fair. Um, it's not fair when it comes to us taxpayers, <laughs> no. um, but it's, it's one of those things where, where it's pretty much all completely out of our hands and, and we're not going to be the only school that's going to be. Uh, but when I was there, we had a $6 million, $6 million budget. We only had $800,000 that we could work with. The rest was oh, like yeah. contracts and it's things that were teachers all decided. Contracts, yeah. Yeah. Nothing you can do. So out of 14 million, yeah. how much if you were said you had to cut 400, what would you have to cut that 400 out of? Well, that's the thing is, I mean, you you wouldn't, I mean, you would building, you know, you could cut the SAP counselor for 125,000. There's, you know, there's another, I think there was another 80,000 with the, some periodicals they want to update. You know, there's things that you have to do. I guess all I'm do. saying is that the people need to understand that yeah. for, you, you can't, you don't have $14 million to work with. Right. right. That's yeah. a good Even point. That's the budget. That's not where you, you can't mm -hmm. dip into that 14 million. No. Take, yeah. take out a little bit. And 125,000 for a full-time counselor is with the issues that we are seeing with young people now is that would be a crazy thing to remove yeah. from the school budget, now, in my personal opinion. The, the only thing that probably will become a, a hot topic on other than the total mm -hmm. dollar is, is we have about $900,000 that is left over from our last budget. Um, and some people are like, well, they sandbagged the budget. And it's like, no. So what's happening right now is <clears throat> there are still some federal funds that you can get that are on the tail end of the COVID funding that we were able to use in our current budget that we didn't think were gonna be available. So, uh, but thankfully we were able to pay certain things. And now some, the, the issue we're gonna have in Vermont is our school actually did a pretty responsible thing and we didn't go and add a bunch of stuff when we had extra money. A lot of other schools went and added a bunch of say positions and things that once the money dries up, you're gonna be stuck paying for, right? So we, we haven't really done that. But what we have been able to do, and you saw it last year, we put a, a large amount back into the capital improvement fund as well, is we've been able to use that money for existing positions. And then we take that money and we put it in a capital fund so that we can continue to build you know, infrastructure. Um, and, there's, and there's a large amount, there's $900,000, which you know, I guess you could put $900,000 towards the budget if you wanted a one-time tax relief of, it's about $100,000 for every penny. So you could decrease it by nine, but at the same time, then you're taking away any of those potential infrastructure savings that are bringing those kids here, you know? So that'll probably be a hot topic on. So you think the 900,000, that's the plan is to put it, if you even get 900,000. Right now we plan on putting it back in the capital fund to use towards the bond. Mm -hmm. um, but someone could say we want to use it towards the budget, you know, but um Oh, there's two big schools going on right now. You know, the, we have two schools that are old. Yeah. That's a good point. This building over here was, I think, built in 1957, 56 mm. or 57. 
Royalton was about the same time. So you're talking yeah, about 75-year-old 75, 75 yeah. schools. You're going to be doing a Burlington and a, oh. Oh, the, that's going to happen again. And mm -hmm. those schools, not Burlington, but was it the Essex or what, what new, um, 99 million? Woodstock, 99 Woodstock, million. Woodstock, two years ago, when they started the process, it was $80 million school that now has been updated to $99 million in Woodstock. So I mean, <laughs> can you imagine having to put those out for on vote? So, but it's... It, Unfortunately, it's it's going to be a tough year tax wise. It, yeah. it just is, um, and a lot of these things are. Some of it's lingering from the COVID stuff. Some of it's lingering from the real estate market mm -hmm. and how it's yeah. fluctuated so much. Well, and that's what happened. And, you know, when you look at the the common level of appraisal right now is probably looking at 20, 20, 20, 21 and 2022. So yeah. that's when you, everybody went crazy. Yeah, buying and, and there's such little inventory on the market mm -hmm. that people are still paying more than things are worth. So we may be looking at a decrease again next year. Now, the good news for Bethel is we will finish our where, you know, we started the first year of our two year rolling reappraisal. So so 2025. 2025, we will be, you know, so we have a couple of years. But the other thing too is I, I encourage people that are listening to this and, and maybe watching it later on, on Orca, uh, need to talk to your legislators. I mean, the fact that there was um, the change um, in Act 127, so that there was, I think it was Act 127. Yeah, the funding formula is changed. So the funding formula, you know, the fact that they decided to change the funding formula and perhaps made a mistake on the penalty so that the general fund had to eat that all at the same year that COVID money's coming mm -hmm. out. You know, it, that's a big pill to swallow. So, sir. On top of all that, they all want a pretty healthy raise. Oh, I didn't know that. $27,000 yeah. to work three months plus a 20 day thing in the summer. Four months okay. a year, you will get $27,000. Oh, I don't know. I oh, haven't yeah. seen. So the part of the thing is Just, we don't normally, there you go. We don't normally spend time um, at the select board discussing the school or the school budget. But this year I felt that it was important because we take the phone calls uh, of people who get their tax mm -hmm. bill and who are unhappy. And they automatically, in, some, in a lot of cases, assume it's all municipal tax, when mm -hmm. in fact we are not the largest portion of your tax right. bill. It is the school and our responsibility is we collect for the school. Mm -hmm. We have to pay the school in full by June 30th, whether or not we have collected the taxes. So even if we have delinquent taxes, that financial burden remains with the town. Mm -hmm. And we're, you know, in this state, doesn't well, I mean, we just have to that. look at all the money during so, COVID, you know, if we agree that the money should have been sent out there or not sent out yeah. there. I mean, even mm -hmm. look at our town, we had gotten a very large chunk of money yeah. that we could do different things with. Now there's no such thing as free money. Right. Yeah. And we're starting to see the, you know, that four or $500,000 that we got. Well, we didn't, oh, you're talking about ARPA money. Yeah, oh, I mean, sorry. it's I all like part of the same about. formula, right? Yeah, and yeah. now you're paying for it. And, mm -hmm. and, and the, the issue that I have and with our legislatures is, and this was before, before COVID, is we have budget issues in Vermont every single year. Every single year you hear 60, $80 million budget shortfalls. What are we going to do? We've heard this since, you know, for decades now. Ever. Yeah. And they had a chance to with the money that was infused into the system to try and deal with those issues while they had that extra cash. And instead they just took the extra cash, plugged holes on it. Two years later, now we still have the same issues and now we don't have the money, right? And in some cases people actually started, you know, bigger budgets because they had more money. Um, you know, we still have a retirement crisis. <laughs> you know, the, the retirement um, in well, Vermont the is, it's crazy. The, and the COVID money was specifically said they couldn't the, use it for, the, you know, so you have, well, for, what happens they is done for they else. just move money yeah, around, right, exactly. you know, you put it in this pocket but and yes. you don't fund yeah. that one, you know? So, I mean, you still have the retirement issues in Vermont. Um, we still have the Medicaid, Medicare mm -hmm. issues in Vermont. Um, and we still have the education issues in yeah. Vermont. And those are all big holes that, um, you know, when we got the money from the federal government, we thought we were all great. And mm -hmm. I mean, look at the last couple of years, taxes have been flat, right? Yeah. Now we're paying the piper, right? So, yeah. and also too, we have to, I think, I just believe that Vermont has to find a better way to fund 
yeah. school tax than than property tax. Well, but the thing is, is I thought they had a study committee. On so that. Well, <laughs> Kurt White said that, right? They, they do. But mm. they, they keep coming back to the same thing. And, and uh, there's a group of people that will not accept uh, income tax. Mm -hmm. Well, they're never right. going to change a part it. of it. Right. They're never going to change it because funding the education system through property taxes is the most reliable way for the state to collect tax from us. Because regardless of what the variable is, it. they're still collecting tax from us. <laughs> now, the reason why they stay away from income based is incomes can change, right? right. So if all of a sudden you go through, mm -hmm. make it up uh, large unemployment, then you can have less people paying into the system. Then you have less education. Right. Now, on if it's property tax, right? Yeah, you're gonna have to pay your property taxes regardless, or else what? Town's gonna sell your house, right? They're gonna sell your house. So it's it's an easy way. Right. It's not a fair way, but no. it's the, it's kind of like our EU no. system for water, right? Well, and it's value. easy, <laughs> right? So. They don't care about the value, so they just change yeah. the percentages. Yeah, and yeah. it's also easy for yeah. the state because they're not collecting. School tax. We are. Yeah. We bear the burden if it's not paid. And we also, you know, so. we get some like point zero zero. I don't know, some ridiculous. So, so I wish I had better news for everybody. But <clears> one, <throat> yeah. one thing, and and uh, I'll pass it on to Therese so she can put it on the website and stuff is there are going to be several opportunities for and individuals the to, I think this is probably one of those years where people really need to take a little time and understand why these changes are happening. So the informational meetings, which normally happen, and then even the, I'll get to you, the superintendent's mm -hmm. doing some of his own little yeah. um, things on the side, mm -hmm. which I thought was really cool um, to, to make sure that people at least are as educated as possible and understand why things are happening. And, and my guess is you're probably gonna see at no fault of, no fault of the school boards, you're gonna probably see a lot of budgets going down just to mm -hmm. send a message to say, this is unacceptable. I mean, yeah. we can't, you know, I mean, in Bethel, 12 cents is going to seem pretty cheap compared to these 30 and 40 cents, right? Yeah. But they're all going up and it, it's crazy. Now in Bethel, we were able to stay under the penalty. Mm -hmm. um, so once you get to 10%, if your budget swings higher than 10% is where you get into the penalty. Um, we were at like four and a half percent. So um, yeah, but if you're not paying the penalty, how do you care? Well, it, <laughs> it you, used to be a per pupil spending. You gap. still pay the piper. Oh, no, but just in a different yeah. way. So, so, did you find it? You were looking no, for that on their website. Oh, it's not okay. Good. Which and one's sorry, not? The vote. The, when what, the vote is. When the, like vote, the school weekend. vote is. Oh. And I'm sorry, I wrote it's it. probably the evening of town meeting day. Uh, I just, we just I did it. I think it's before it's, that. We just did our morning day. Oh, I thought it was the Monday night before. Yeah, it used, to, it used to be the Monday night before town meeting. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't. It's, I wrote it. On that, so I wrote I it down know. today because I had Pam well, check let for me. me. See here. We just did it. Want to do the select board meeting minutes from the 8th? I was not here, so let Dave do that one. Any additions, omissions? on the printed minutes of December 8th? January 8th. January 8th, I'm sorry. That's okay. I didn't have any. I didn't see any. Okay. Jane? No? You good? Look like the meeting I attended. <laughs> <laughs> Move to approve the uh, January 8th meeting minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Here we go. Right. So as far as other communications in the packet, there were, um, hmm, let's see, not the much. Survey. Uh, the survey, this is the one I worked on with Ellie. So we added a couple questions, uh, just your information on the CLA, the Equalized Study results. Uh, Rick Benson is looking at the sales study that was done um, and has a couple questions he's getting answered from the state just to make sure that that is as accurate as can be. And then there were minutes from the Bethel Recreation Committee. I like the additions of the survey questions. Yeah, those were good. Yeah, Ellie had some others. And, and like I said, we were really looking for something that was simpler to put on, to create on SurveyMonkey to get on the website. Yeah. And um, it'll be the last page of town report like it was another time ago. So someone can tear it out and either mail it or drop it off. There's also email address so they could scan it to and... Um, 
like I said, and I think, and we will be putting it on the website via Survey Monkey. So, and that will I be probably my a couple computer of weeks. Was broken when I went through the packet and it got. I know. <laughs> that's what Lindley was. That's was, what Lindley was saying. Well, you know, because they've been long going through the budget and everything, and and like I said, I was uh, Dietrich, myself, and it, we're all putting the final touches on the um, town report. But so we'll put that information. Chris will get me the information for yeah, when the school stuff. when the election is. All the school stuff. We'll put it on our website. We'll put it on front porch mm -hmm. forum. I'm sure the school will do the same. We could also put it on our Facebook page. Um, so is there a copy of that available? Uh, Paul, yeah. Okay. Paul Valley yeah. has a question. You're muted, Paul. There, he's oh, good. Okay. There you so go. You're okay. on, on the budget that, that I'm looking at, you you put in a note there that said what the increase would be based on a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house. Uh -huh. You know, so we can do the math from there and figure out how much mine is actually going to go up. Is the school budget going to reflect the same? type of information not on our budget it's not i don't know what the they, schools they do <laughs> they do have that um they they do kind of similar um let me just see the one that she had here did you say uh, you gave a number a few minutes ago 12 cents so based on the no, 12 no, cents right no, now how much any oh, 1400 yeah um, that was the town Right, twenty one thousand. Yeah, I think that's what they were talking. About. So in Bethel right now, based on the twelve cent increase, uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house is three hundred eleven dollars and fifty seven cents a year increase. Say that again. Twelve cents on a two hundred fifty thousand dollar house yes. is what three hundred eleven dollars and fifty seven cents more than last year. Yep. Yep. And in Royalton's. Royalton right now, so ours is going up 12 cents. Royalton's is going up 7.9 cents because their common level didn't decrease as much. Right. So but you said cent. they took a bigger hit last year. Yeah. they took it. If you look at the last two years now, we're about even. Yeah. So, um, and theirs is a little different at the school side mm -hmm. of it, Paul, like every $100,000 in the budget is one penny. <clears throat> Uh, we're at the town every $21,400 is a penny. So yeah. the pennies well, change a little. It works out because, you know, on the, on the Bethel budget, on the municipal budget, you can do the math and figure out exactly how much the increase is going to be mm -hmm. based on, you know, what's on, what you've got on the, on the paper here for revenues. So mm -hmm. it's good to have that information for the school side too. So you can get an idea of what's going to happen, potentially happen. I think when I looked at it last, like on at, between the town and the school, this is assuming that this this doesn't count the extra articles. But if you just look at the base budget with the school, the average two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house increase is going to be about five hundred dollars a year. Three three fifty of that's at the school, and one hundred and fifty is at the town level. Mm -hmm. yeah. right, right now. Right, and that depends if the and it could go up another hundred or so dollars if we, if we increase or if everything gets put in there. So right, and if the yield changes, if it, they have until June, it's likely that after the budget gets passed, that the yield will probably change even more. Mm -hmm. Which which um, it's kind of the unfair system that you you vote yeah. something and then they still change it on you. It's, right, it doesn't feel no legal. because <laughs> we don't we don't get the school tax rate until yeah. right before I'm ready to publish tax bills. No, oh, so backwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. the other thing that they said you could do, you know, because a lot of times I guess they know the number in April somewhere mm -hmm. is, you know, technically you could do your school meeting in late April or May, you know, yeah. you could do it later. The only problem is if it if gets, you, voted, down, it gets then, voted down, then you kind of start the year with a different, your prior well, year's you're back budget. to the reverted budget, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the other thing too, is if, you know, at this point we are still saying there'll be no growth in the grand list. So, but if that changes with, yeah. you know, a few additions, but we don't really anticipate a lot of growth this year in the grand list. So, so it's a, you know, it's a lot. And, and like I said, we don't normally spend time discussing the school budget, but it seemed pertinent yeah. to ours. I mean, if, and especially, like I said, when we're doing the collections, you know, want people to know. Look, not not to say that he'd be available, but if you've got to get Kirk to start coming back, if, if you wanted, I could talk to the superintendent mm -hmm. about coming and visiting one of the meetings and he could talk a little bit 
like a 15, 20 minute thing on what the school budget really would be like if people want to hear it. Cause I know, I think the biggest thing is probably a lot of town folks that use the zoom for us don't necessarily tune into the school one. So Mm -hmm. if we wanted to do that as I could reach out to him and see if he wanted to take 15 or 20 minutes, he could do it right on the zoom, you know, Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Well, you got plenty to do. He's he's a pretty awesome guy, and I think we're really lucky to have him. He's yeah. a straight shooter. I, mean, and I don't see why not. It it educates, it helps educate our voters. So if they're interested, and in, you know they can tune in. So okay, just change. And I also reach out to Kirk White because Kirk um, he usually starts coming to the select board meetings in January, and I honestly have been busy and I haven't reached out to him, but maybe get him to come to the next meeting too. So. Mm-hmm. so Oh, it's another man I've just signed. So that's just the one from last night, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't have anything. Anything else. further to come before the board? Let's hear for that one. Not that one. All right. Just need a motion to adjourn. No move. Adjourn. Second. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Good night.